look at the fit here. It's so satisfying. This is not falling out anywhere. Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be doing a mailbag time and some channel updates because there's a lot of interesting mods that are coming that I think you would really like and also have some 3D printing stuff coming along as well because my new 3D printer is absolutely phenomenal and I'll have an update video on that in the upcoming days. Now, I've been designing and 3D printing stuff for all kinds of quadcopters and all kinds of mods, so it's going to be a pretty interesting ride. So let's get started and see what I got here. So first of all, there's a TBS Crossfire. Now, I did have this. Now, I 3D designed and printed a holder, so we can set this up on the fly sky. Now, I'm currently working on a little PCB here and the overall end execution of the mod. Now, this will allow you to play any uh, FR Sky module that takes PPM on your fly sky transmitter, which is really, really nice. So, yeah, we're going to be seeing this upcoming very, very soon. It's almost done, really. Now, also got a couple new things, uh, which I think are pretty interesting. The R9, I think this is the M. I got the R9 and the R9M. So this is the uh, R9M currently. So let's take a look at it. It's the red one here. So it's going to be pretty nice here. So I am in Europe, so I'm going to have to switch this to 800 uh, megahertz here. But overall, this thing is going to be an absolute beast. Let's see what it comes in the package here. So we do get the R9M module here. It's really nice red. I really like that. We get two instruction manuals. I think one for the module itself and one for the receiver. We get this really big antenna here. I'll be using my TBS Crossfire antenna for this one, and I'll probably get the other one as well. And we do they do also provide us with the receiver. Now, the receiver is different than the TBS Crossfire, and the way that it's different is because it has two antennas going on for it. My TBS Crossfire only had one, so this is really nice. It's using diversity here, so I really like seeing that as well. And here we just have some extra wires for the receiver. So this is going to be really interesting. Uh, I am going to be doing long range stuff. So that's going to be also as well very fun. I'm currently building the setups as we speak right now. I'm actually 3D printing some of the things that I'm going to need. And I'll be doing these on wings. So uh, to get as much range as possible here. So let's put this to the side. And let's see what else we got. All right. So I also picked up one of these here. Uh, this is a controller for RC cars. Now, lately, I've been kind of obsessed with RC cars because I could just put it down and drive it anywhere. So this is a FlySky uh, transmitter, which I'll have a separate video on later on. It comes really it's it's really nice. Actually, I really like this. Look at this. It's crazy. It has a, all kinds of features and stuff. So another reason why I picked this up also, believe it or not, is because some guy commented, hey, can we run TBS Crossfire on these cars? And, and yes, we can actually, because TBS Crossfire does have PWM output. And what we can do is if I could find a PPM output on this transmitter here, uh, we can actually install the TBS Crossfire module to it and actually use TBS Crossfire on a FlySky RC car. So I don't know how much range that would give, but I think that would be a quite interesting little video. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I'll be taking this apart very soon, but currently I'm waiting for its receivers or the one without the receivers. So first, I just want to get an idea, get a feel for it, use it before opening this guy up and finding that PPM output and then routing it out and designing something that would go somewhere. I have no idea where, but probably back here looks nice. Somehow we'll figure something out for this, but I think that's going to make for a very interesting video and we'll see how well that goes. Also, uh, these were actually provided by Maytech. I actually wrote Maytech. I said, hey, can I get your new flight controllers? Now, these are these are flight controls are for wings and they can be used for quadcopters as well. They have many outputs and they're really, really interesting. So I really can't wait to actually start using these. This is the platform that I'm going to be doing long range testing on here. So it's going to be like I always mention, Maytech is the most reliable for me always. Uh, so this is really nice, especially if you're into wings and probably big quadcopters as well. This could do, do just that. So this is this setup just has a bunch of PWM outputs and it has all kinds of other crazy features here. And it has two protection boards, especially when you put these inside your quadcopter, uh, your, your flying wing here. You can just use double sided tape and stick it down and it'll be protected with this external uh, PCB here and the bottom PCB here. There, there's nothing on the top and the bottom one here. And uh, all it is is for protection of the main components in there, which is really, really nice. I like how the USB is sticking up here. So that's it's a really thought out uh, piece of, uh, of hardware here for, for, for wings, which 
Um, to be honest, I'm quite excited for it, to be honest. Because, you know, in the snow, I could really go fly my wings and try to do all kinds of fun things. And also, RC cars is going to be pretty interesting. And I'll have a brand new waterproof build coming on the channel. A budget waterproof build. So they have two of these. They have FC F405 wing. And they have the FC F411 wing, which is a little bit smaller. Or I think it could be the same thing. No, but it's using the smaller uh, microcontroller unit here. So these are going to be really interesting. I'll have a separate video for these later on. Now, if you've been watching my channel, I recently uh, ripped my TBS Crossfire antennas off the receiver. And which is why I've been grounded with the wings here. And what I did was I found some on Banggood. And I picked up quite a few of them, actually. I just picked up four of them here. So if you take a look here, they come even... Look, this is really nice, actually. They come protected with this little plastic thing. Which, uh, to be honest, I'm really liking. And it's, it's really nice. And these work both on TBS Crossfire as well as the R9M... Uh, um, the FR Sky R9M receivers here, so that's that's really really nice. You could change this from red to black, the little tips here. So I really like this, and um, I'm very glad I got them. They look really good quality. So they're a little bit expensive. I think each was like four bucks. I got like four of them or something. But um, at the end, at the end of the day, the other day I was actually opening my Crossfire TBS Crossfire package, and I found out that they also provide you with an extra antenna for the receiver. Yeah, so I got four of these guys. Also, we got the new Hack RC50 Amp ESC, which will be coming up for a review. It's a 3-6S LiPo, and we will be testing this with and without the low ESR capacitor. So this is going to be for an interesting video very soon, because I think it's very good priced. Also, I picked up a GP... Actually, I got two GPSs. One Matek provided, the other one I purchased. Uh, Matek provided me one without a compass. They, 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 I guess they make GPSs. So I put that one on my 10-inch hexacopter that I'm currently building. Uh, there won't be a build video, but there'll be just a breakdown video. There, it really didn't need a build video at all. Yeah, I'll just show you how it is, and we'll just take it out to the field instead of wasting your time. So I also picked up another one. This one has a compass on board. I'll leave a link down below. I'll have everything linked down below. Uh, this is going to be, I think, for my wing, my long-range testing wing. So I need something with a compass and a GPS to get it going. So th I thought this was the best choice, I guess. I don't know anything about GPSs, but all I know is I trust Matek. So if Matek... Uh, is gonna is making GPS's. I'm gonna pick one of theirs up, even if they're rebranding it. They know what the hell they're doing most of the time. Also, I got this here. This is for the Firefly cameras, the 8S and the 8SE. This plugs into the USB on it, and then now what happens is it gives me a video output, and it also charges the camera, which is really nice. So this thing can take a 2 to 6S LiPo charge. So basically, the the battery voltage from your quadcopter or whatever. If you're doing a gimbal setup, it'll charge the camera as well as give you a video output. And here's a PWM signal to start recording or take pictures, which is really great. And this is what I really needed, actually. So I picked this up. It doesn't come with them, which is kind of a shame. But since I have two, it's okay. I just purchased one and I do have a gimbal setup that's currently uh, being built. I have actually two big quadcopters that I'm currently going to be building. I have a, a, a quad. It's going to be a 12 inch quad. And a 10-inch uh, uh, hexacopter. 10-inch hex hexacopter is basically completely 100% ready. Now I'm just waiting for propellers. And here also we have another another uh, another adapter, but I had no idea what the hell this was. So I just got a bunch of them just in case to see what I got to work. And I also got this one, hoping this would work for the tarot because the tarot gimbal that I have, I don't know if I'm missing it or it just didn't come with the package. But I purchased this hoping that it would fit because I couldn't find anywhere online. What happens is this is connects to your uh, GoPro, let's say. And this would connect to the gimbal. You have a little, you know, connection right there, right on the bottom. So the wires don't get all tangled up. And that pipes the video feed and as well as gives it, you know, charges the camera through uh, the gimbal's internal wires so it doesn't get tangled. But it turns out this is slightly too big and this is not going to work for it. But it might work for something else some other day. But yeah, that was a really big letdown for me. So yeah, what else did I get? I also picked this up because I had a feeling I'm going to need this. I don't know why. This is an S-Bus to PWM uh, converter. So it takes S-Bus here and it converts it to 16 channels of PWM. And I believe it does have telemetry as well. Now this is going to be a pretty interesting one. Uh, this is going to be used for a couple things. I mean, for one, we can use this, for example, uh, on the R9M if we're going to use 
one of these guys if the, the the module takes pwm so it's gonna be really interesting and i might and i just have a feeling i'm gonna need this somehow so that's why i picked this up i'll leave a link down below i thought this was a really good one it's a really good size as well and i really like all the outputs are really labeled here if you take a look uh ground positive and a signal on all of them and you do have channels one all the way to eight and then you have ground and then you have nine through uh 16 and then tx and ground so yeah, it's really nice in that perspective. So I had to get one of these. It just you know, sometimes you just get a feeling that you're gonna need something. So might as well pick it up before you need it, so you don't have to wait a trillion years and forget what you were doing. So overall, that's currently it for the mailbag time. I do have I think other things also, but um, they're not really that interesting. But yeah, this is this is what's currently going on right now. I'm working on the mods, and I've actually started designing a couple. Uh, 3d printed camera holders of different kinds for the Hollybrew Copus if you go to my forum I do my prototypes there before uploading them to Thingiverse So if you wanted to go check some of the things if you wanted to collaborate with me You wanted the source code so you can actually make it better. That'd be super awesome You go and just ask me I'll just drop whatever you need in there So it's community driven projects what I'm trying to do and the reason why I chose the Hollybrew Copus too was because it just flies so nice and uh, I want it to be my main FPV action camera testing quad. Other than a drone gimbal testing quadcopter or hexacopter that I'm building, I wanted one for the FPV. And that's the one that I chose and that's the one that I'm using. And to be honest, that's the most trusted quad I have. I am constantly reaching for it, which I really, I'm really enjoying it. I do have a couple more videos I'll be uploading throughout the days. But that quad, I've been flying and flying and flying and I'm in love. Um, it actually, you know, for, I don't know how to say this, but it made me just fly worry free. It's kind of like taking your RC car, sticking it on the floor and flying it. It's the same exact feeling I get with that one. You know, you just stick the battery and go flying. That's it. It just flies. So what I did was, like, like I mentioned, I did test the Firefly, the Hawkeye Firefly 8S on that quad, but I had a, a PLA printed uh, mount which was very harsh so what I did was is I used the same TPU the same uh, flexible filament at 93a hardness or shore um, and I'm going to make three attachments one for the GoPro one for the one cam 3s and one for the firefly type action cameras which is like the GoPro hero type action cameras so we can get a really nice testing result because it'll have the same platform it'll also have the same mounting solution and overall should give us a clear representation of which one is good and which one is is really not good i guess in a way but you, you at the end of the day you decide for yourself i'm just trying to make a nice uh stable uh consistent platform to test those on so you can see that for yourself and at the same time i'm also providing the 3d files for the hollybro copus 2 and i'll be doing other stuff as well so i am really loving my new 3d printer which is the creality cr10 mini i'll have it linked down below this thing is print and forget, which I love. Just make sure you, the, the main thing to do on this after you assemble it, just level the bed once. And then every time you're gonna boot it up, just level, just, you just need fine adjustments of leveling. It doesn't take three minutes. And I just level it and start printing and I, I just let it go, which is amazing. And now I just made a little mod for it to print three uh, flexible filament. And it's been flawless, not a single issue, which is just awesome. The only things I have to do is just figure out my extrusion multiplier because the 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 flexible filament the gears push on it so what happens is you know when you tell it to extrude 10 millimeters on a hard pla plastic since it's stiff it doesn't get bent so you know it'll extrude those 10 but when you put a flexible filament and you say extrude 10 millimeters you might just extrude three millimeters so you have to add that multiplier to get it just right so hopefully i'm doing it right now on the first print of the hollybro copus twos uh, action cam uh, mount for for it so we'll see how well that goes I'll, I'll have an update video probably up for that in the uh, upcoming days or probably even before this video I don't know yet but yeah overall I do have a lot of things that I'm working on which is really nice and also if you wanted to see this is also this will also work for the R9M by the way um, as you can tell here this is so nice I designed it and then uh, I just printed it and then it just came out perfect. I didn't have more than one print. It was just one print and it was just perfect. Look, it's just, look, look at the look at the fit here. It's so satisfying. This is not falling out anywhere, which is really nice. I really love this to be honest. This is I, th I know it's not available on Thingiverse just yet, but will be very soon. Um, but I just didn't know how to really do these. I wanted you know the, when I when I design something, I want it to be fast to print easy to print with no support 
And this is the reason why I chose it to be like this, just hardcore squared and then just, you know, that's it. I could just print up right here. And this is, it's a small gap there. It didn't need much, uh, it didn't need any uh, support material down here, which is really nice. And then, boop, and that's it. It's very economical and it works perfect. So it's really nice. And um, yeah, well, that's to be expected on the channel. And uh, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in a couple hours or maybe tomorrow. So peace out, guys.